I ask myself, how can I be unshakable? Why can't we take that same concept and apply like that love of ice cream in that contentment and that fulfillment and that connection into something like ideas? Having different viewpoints, different perspectives, different knowledge, different everything helps us build up resilience. We can be steadfast while still being flexible. Yes, I want to be unshakable in what I know, but I don't want to do it from the egoic standpoint. I want to do it from the I know myself truth and I'm not shaken in that. That doesn't mean my door is closed to learning more. You know, I'd spent so much time saying no, 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 and I was missing out on something I really enjoyed. How often are we handcuffing ourselves in that way by saying no? In a world that's seemingly kind of gone a little bit in multiple directions, something that I keep asking myself when I do my evening kind of reviews of my day or I start looking at my day in the morning, planning it out, I ask myself, how can I be unshakable? Right. What is it that I can do to really stay true to myself when everything else seems to be in this chaotic swirl? And we have come up with some things that really help us stay unshakable in our focus as we do. Because let me tell you, we have politics that people really want to come out swinging about or belief systems, all of these things that just seem to be a reason to take one side or the other and come at each other instead of have an unshakable stance in what we have in our lives while also honoring all of the other flavors that can go on in the world. So are you willing to have a conversation about that in the event other people are feeling that too? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's probably harder than, than ever at this point because there are so many different sides, different perspectives, which is in many ways a beautiful thing. I mean, that's if we can look at the positive of this at first and recognize, wow, we're in a space in a technological space that allows a lot of humanity to have its own voice. That's amazing. That could be one of the greatest opportunities for this species. Like, like it's, it's seriously, like it's phenomenal. Problem is we haven't really learned how to, uh, how to manage it. Yes. Right. There's a lot of different voices and, uh, and most of us don't even know how to manage the voices in our head, let alone <laughs> those around us going on, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I think us really learning how to effectively have conviction in our own beliefs through self-love and self-truth, and then all simultaneously honoring that of others is such an important topic when it comes to the current discourse. Yes. So much. And I know I, we have this conversation a lot in our own circles around, okay, so you guys talk about self-love and you talk about all of these things, but when you have something that you know is just true for you and somebody opposes that, adamantly opposes that, how do you not come back and get triggered by it and end up in a disagreement? And point blank, I mean, we're human, right? But our choice and response doesn't have to be one of anger. It doesn't have to be one of I'm right and you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Everything that we choose is up to us in our response. And that is part of it, recognizing the choice that we have. Yes, I can hold to what I believe. And those beliefs change over time. But when we look at things like just this past year, right, I have had friends and family who have gotten sick, who have passed away, who have had varying 
political beliefs and have made that known across social media or in our conversations. And our stances may differ and we may, yes, I'm going to miss the people that have passed away. I may have a different take on the path they go down for healing their specific illness. I may have chosen a different path. It's not my path. That's the thing I consistently have to remind myself. My choice in that situation may have been different, but it's not my path. It is not my choice. So if I'm asking to be true to myself and honor my own stance, then I also have to allow grace for them to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I can't ask for something and not give the very thing that I'm asking for, yes, right? And that's something that I feel even I had such room for growth. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I'm perfect, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like I are. never get triggered by you. <laughs> <laughs> we have moments of being triggered. But it's recognizing that growth opportunity yeah. that helps us become unshakable. Mm-hmm. Because then we turn it to ourselves too. And we're like, I have the choice in how I'm going to respond. And I have the choice in how I let someone treat me. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. You know, the, the irony of it is that we, at least in the United States, I can't speak for other countries at this point, but a lot of people in the United States are probably or have probably already practiced this. There's a lot of people who have been to Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors. It's not like there's people are going in like, oh, why are there only, there should only be chocolate and vanilla and that's it. It's like, no, there's. Don't give me so many choices. Stop it. (laughs) Everyone's like, yeah, there's free taste tests. I can taste taste them all. Like, that's so exciting. I want to learn. I want to, maybe that's not, you know, like maybe that one's not great or this one's not great, but oh, I love this one. And then you're with your family and maybe. You know, the family members, they chose like Cherry Garcia or Rocky Road or Pistachio. And then you got your favorite mint chocolate chip. It's not like you're condemning everyone else for their choice. You're sitting there being happy because everyone chose what is right for them. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And everyone's just enjoying the ice cream. So why can't we take that same concept and apply like that love of ice cream in that contentment and that fulfillment and that connection and that family bond into something like ideas. Yes. Because that's all that politics and government and all these in religion and faith and beliefs and all these, they're just, they're ideas. Ideas that we have the opportunity to embody. Absolutely. Yeah. But we know that we can have this type of quality discord. We can allow ourselves to hold what we love while also simultaneously letting someone else hold what they love. And we can still be in a, in a uplifting environment. If we can do it with ice cream, we can do it with everything else. And think about the resilience that that creates within us. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because if we all just agreed with everything Mm -hmm. all of the time, then there's no tension that gets created. And if you're looking to work out or do anything, part of that buildup is creating tension or some kind of resistance in order to build up muscle resilience, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same with emotional resilience or mental resilience. Having different viewpoints, different perspectives, different knowledge, different everything helps us build up resilience. You and I not agreeing on everything helps us build up resilience in our relationship. Mm -hmm. But it also helps me understand what I do believe, what I stand for. When I take the time to go, okay, in juxtaposition to that, what do I feel? And you may ask me a question that then I can't answer based on my feeling or my own knowledge or awareness. And so what is that going to do? It's going to cause me to go and investigate. 
So then I expand my own knowledge as a result of that. And when we live in this state of no, it has to be the way that I see it, then we're going to lose all of that. We're going to lose the opportunity to get better within ourselves by not honoring the fact that somebody else, a lot of somebody else's don't see things the way that we do. Yeah. It's almost like the more we, if we focus on the word no, no almost stands for negating opportunity. Ah, I love that. And, and like we're, we're, we're missing out. Now, I mean, we can have a whole other conversation on why saying no is important. I mean, there's, right. <laughs> there's definitely a, an op- that's there is truth to that. But what we're talking about, no can, can really provide a very closed off approach. Right. And we could be missing out on something that we never even really thought of. I mean, if we go back to ice cream, um, I love mint chocolate chips so much. You know, I just, I just, I didn't want to taste anything else. I loved what I loved and I just want to stick with it. And to me, it tastes like toothpaste. Yeah, exactly. That could, for sure. One of my dad's favorites was pistachio. And I just, it just sounded so gross to me. <laughs> I was like, no, thank you. I don't want to, I want to do mint chocolate chip. Just give me that. And then finally one day I, I tasted it and I absolutely loved it. And there I'd spent so much time saying no, 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 no. And I was missing out on something I really enjoyed. You know, how often are we, are we handcuffing ourselves in that way by saying no? Right. You know, when it comes to these different ideas or different approaches, hearing people out, if we're so busy getting stuck in this one way and this one thing, then what what are we missing out on this amazing universe that is replete with so many opportunities that we don't even know how to comprehend? Yeah. But part of that is being open to experiencing something Mm -hmm. and then determining, is it for you or is it not? Sure. Right. Which is a challenge. Now, taking a step back from that approach and saying, okay, but... If I was the hard topics to talk about, right? Politics, religion. Mm -hmm. If I was raised under one political system and one ideology my whole life, how willing am I going to be to sample Baskin Robbins style, your approach, another political ideology in order to know if it's right for me? Mm -hmm. That is challenging, right? But if we're looking for that unshakable or that self-truth, how can you know if one is your Mm self-truth if you don't do that, as you just pointed out? Because all we've ever done is relegated ourselves to one little set Mm -hmm. of things. Until we have broadened our spectrum and really taken the time to know and to understand it from more than one angle, we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to know what is true for us. All we're doing is saying, I believe this is true for me based on the small subset of data that I have. Mm -hmm. And being the kind of geek gal that I am, like a lot of times I go back to that whole scientific approach, right? If I am doing things in my life and I don't have all of the data, then I'm limiting my awareness. Especially if I'm looking at belief systems or politics or any of the things that right now as a human collective, we spend so much of our time fighting over. Mm -hmm. How can I make an educated and an informed choice for myself to become unshakable if all I've done is place myself in one subset without exploring and at least becoming knowledgeable, if not experiencing the others. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes challenging at times if somebody is raising up to me that, no, you are wrong 100% without a doubt based on the smallest of subsets. When I know that I've done research across a large amount of subsets. Now, in their world, I am wrong. Mm -hmm. And I 100% respect that. Mm -hmm. 100%. They're looking at it from their lens of reality. And I know that. And so that's where, again, 
I have the choice of how I respond. Do I come at them from, no, you're wrong because I have all this and you have this much information? Or do I say, you know what, they might know a lot in that area that I don't know. So how about I learn what they know? Because chances are I didn't go that deep in that area. And they have a lot to offer and they have a lot to show me. So if I truly desire to become unshakable in an area of my own self-truth, then I can't run from being challenged. I need to run toward being challenged. And I need to ask more questions. What makes you believe that I am wrong? If you know that I have all this other information and you still steadfastly believe that I am not correct, help me understand from your perspective. Mm -hmm. Share your knowledge with me. And then we can come to some awareness and some understanding. Mm -hmm. Because I'm guessing they have a reason that they are unshakable in their belief. And I'm not going to get to it if I'm just standing on ego. Yes, I want to be unshakable in what I know, but I don't want to do it from the egoic standpoint. I want to do it from the, I know my self-truth and I'm not shaken in that. That doesn't mean my door is closed to learning more. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you hit on a huge part that I feel like that there's a, this behavior is stems from um a misunderstanding of how to utilize ego and identity you know oftentimes we take our ideas or what's around us and we pull them from the external to the internal to form who we are and and why why we are in many ways and so you know growing up if we're in an area and a lot of the people around us believe a certain thing or have a certain perspective on the government, it's really easy to say, okay, well, that's the identity that I desire to, to take on because then I won't be ostracized. I won't be left out. You know, I want to fit in. You know, humanity is, has this deep, deep desire to be included. And understandable. Which is totally understandable, yeah. I mean, we are stronger together, so that natural inclination to want to be a part of a group is a beautiful thing. But when we're using it as, uh, as something to fuel our ego and our identity, that's where I feel like the, the misinterpretation comes into play. Yeah. And it's, it's what you're talking about to me about building resilience isn't a result. And that's what a lot of these things, these ideas and these, you know, steadfastness or I only believe in this or this is the only way. These are all result conversations. But what you're talking about, resilience, how do, I, how do I stay strong in what I believe in? To me, that's a process, yes. which is different. Because being resilient isn't about being stuck. It isn't about being in one place or one thought or one idea. That doesn't make you resilient. Having the opportunity to expand, learn, and grow and, and, and move forward in your ideas and your evolution as a, as a human being um, and constantly transforming while also having resilience to get you there. That's the process. So resilience is a super skill. Hey, Heart Leader community. This is Amber Mikesell, and I am so excited. Silence Your Inner Critic has a release date. We'll be hitting shelves March of 2025. And you have an opportunity to get on the wait list by clicking the link below. And when you do, you're going to immediately get a gift from me. It is the Silence Your Inner Critic Starter Kit, where you'll get 13 tips to get started on silence silencing your inner critic before the book hits the shelves. Yes, I love that summary. And to me, if we just keep looking at it as that process, like working out, right? Yeah. Again, going back to the whole gym approach. Mm -hmm. If we're looking to develop resilience in our strength, like have that then we have to be willing to go back and go back and go back and keep growing in our strength and our flexibility and all of the things that go into that. Yeah. We have to do the same with our emotions, with our mental capacity, all of it. Mm -hmm. We can't be so rigid that we can't move. And that's what I'm observing quite often is that rigidity. Mm -hmm. 
But that doesn't mean that observationally there aren't times when we don't have to, going back to that Captain America quote that I love so much, Mm -hmm. like when the whole world is telling you that something wrong is right, when they're telling you to move, you have to plant yourself like a tree and say, no, you move. And I'm sure I botched the quote, but it means so much. Like to me, that quote plays in my head well enough that if I know in my soul that I'm being asked to do something that goes against my moral compass, that goes against my ethics or my deepest beliefs, then I have to be willing. Even if the whole world is telling me that it's the right thing to do, Mm -hmm. if I know in my soul that it does not go with my self-truth, I have to be willing to plant myself Mm -hmm. and say, no, I am not doing it. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you can't do it. If that fits for you, then you do it. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm not being forced into something that I don't feel fits my self-truth. Because even if the choice is death, I still have a choice. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's, it, that's, that's the beauty of conviction in, in to me. Like conviction is not rigid. It's the ability to stick to your truth while still bringing in new information. You know, if for some reason, maybe let's say you do have a strong belief in something and you keep gaining information and through that process of gaining information, you realize, oh, wow, you know, maybe I misunderstood or maybe, you know, my, my ideas shifted around this and I, and I, and I, and I want to, want to adopt this new approach. Yes. Okay. You know, that doesn't make you false. That doesn't make you wrong or, you know, any negative term. You know, I think that's, I think that's where, that's the tough part that if it's, it's, how do we, how do we practically apply this to our daily life without, you know, losing face or seeming embarrassed or feeling guilty or, you know, any of these other things that we, we, none of us like actively want to feel these things. And in fact, most of us attempt to spend most of our days not feeling any of these things, right? Yeah. But sometimes they happen. And so that's where this idea of resilience as, as a process over a result is more important for us to be able to say, hey, you know, for most for X amount of years or most of my life, I really believed this. But now with this new information and I'm and I'm applying it to the way that I thought, to the way that I'm evolving as a person, and I see a greater picture. And so now I'm going to adjust. And that's going to help me be the greatest version of the grandest vision of who I am. And therefore I am enhancing my resilience and I am practicing my resilience. And I'm putting that resilience to test through process. That's a great thing. That's a beautiful thing. And I think that's the how, right? You started by asking, how do we do that and feel like we're not losing face or Mm -hmm. having the embarrassment? I feel like most people, as long as you can come at it from that stance of, hey, I started here. This was what I knew to be true. And I believed it wholeheartedly. But that belief is what led me to understand the next part, which is what led me to understand the next part. And now this is where I am. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I did believe that. But now this is where I am on my journey. And here's how I got there. Mm -hmm. Most people are so willing to follow that with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, my flow, for example, like, I did not start out where I am today, Mm -hmm. especially in religion, Mm -hmm. right? I really was very, very devout Christian. And I still, to this day, honor Christian values. Mm -hmm. But I am not Christian Mm -hmm. at this point. I would not call myself a Christian because it is not a practicing faith that I every Sunday go to church or follow the same things that I once did in my life. Mm -hmm. But I hold those values very dear to myself. Mm -hmm. I also very much honor Vedic philosophy. Mm -hmm. I honor Buddha 
and Buddhic philosophy, I'm not Buddhist. the right term, thank you, yeah. <laughs> we were going to get there, <laughs> Buddhist philosophies and all of these other beautiful ways of having spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. And so having the opportunity to blend these forms of love to me is what's led me to where I am in my life. But had I not started with such a deep bound faith in Christianity, I don't know that I would be where I am right mm -hmm. now. And so I am so grateful for where I started to get me to where I am. Yeah. And absolutely. I mean, there's this. And in, by the way, sorry for the Buddhist out there for botching. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It's words, you get talking. Words get yeah, <laughs> tongue tied and it's all good. Um, yeah, there's. This idea, I think, again, it goes back to our, our misinterpretation of our own identity and, and not having that being a huge part of our societal approach. A lot of the things that I used to believe in were, were tied to who I thought I was. Yeah. As I uncovered my authentic self, then my ideologies shifted. Yes. And it wasn't a flip-flop. It wasn't like, you know, oh, I went here and then now I'm way over here, or this, you know, or vice, or, or you know, whether it was a small or a large shift. It wasn't about that. It was just, well, as I uncovered who I am and who I truly feel connected to at every level of myself, body, mind, emotion, and spirit, the ideas in which I desire to embody myself and, and bring into reality and be a part of in this reality changed. And that's okay. We don't have to, you know, it's, again, it's not, when we go from the internal and express into the external, then that true authentic version of the self is what's interacting with the world, not letting the external define who you are and then getting stuck in that. And it's not like, hey, I've been there. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not in any way condemning that, that understanding. That's how literally the whole world is, is positioning itself in terms of how we should be, how we should act, what we should do. That's definitely what it feels like to me. And it does take resilience. It takes that, that skill to, to, have, to plant yourself like a tree. Yeah. Like you, like like Captain America was saying, and and have conviction in what you believe in, and and stick to it, and you know in, in the end it's it's all learning, it's okay, you know. Yeah, I stuck to my mint chocolate chip for a very long time. You know, it made me very <laughs> happy. <laughs> you know, yes. there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't lose because because I didn't test the other thirty flavors. And now we know? have salty caramel. <laughs> yes, there's so many so other fun many ones, that right? We go into. <laughs> yeah. And just for clarity, yes. in the movie, I think it was actually Peggy Carter who ended up saying it, but in the comic, it is Captain America who says uh, it. Okay. For anyone who's like nice. on the on the nerdy level like us, I just awesome. want to make sure that we'll have to pop in the the video quote here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, I really do feel that this sense of resilience can, can be a huge, huge asset for an individual. And it is tied to understanding how to manage and maneuver and navigate one's identity and ego into that flow. And it can help and, the, and it can be a sounding board, you know, and that's, that's the beauty of, of this is that you can, you can use your beliefs, uh, um, uh, I, I, one of the things I, uh, Joe Rogan talks about how ideas are like clothes. You, know, you can you can try them on, see how they fit, and you can always put on another one, another, you know, and see what you think and how that goes. and And it helps understand, just like we take on clothes to help s uh, support our identity. Yeah. You know, it's kind of the same concept. We can use ideas to help support our identity, but when they're defining our identity, that's that's where it starts to get um, a little convoluted. Yeah. And I think it's the same with choices too, yeah, right? True. We tend to think if I've chosen this, then that becomes part of my identity. Mm -hmm. And I am now locked into this and I need to see it through forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if you've chosen something and it already doesn't feel in alignment, then choose again. Yeah. You can always make the other choice and go back. Yeah. But part of this 
life is to experience, to see what starts to fit. And if we truly want to have that unshakable knowing of who we are, if we don't have that exploratory part of ourselves, then how do we know, right? So when we're talking about tips and things that can help someone get to this stage of just being unshakable and their self-knowing and their self-truth, being willing to choose Mm -hmm. and choose again, being willing to not make choices identity, being willing to not make ideas identity, and just explore new and different ideas that don't fit with what they may have always known. If somebody has an idea that differs from theirs, can you choose to not be offended by that, but maybe curious about it? And explore, all right, what does that actually mean to me? Mm. Can it help me understand more about why I believe what I believe? If it shifts what I believe, is that going to hurt me in any way? Mm -hmm. The only hurt we tend to feel is death to our ego, Mm -hmm. right? And that only happens if we've done what you talked about, which has made that idea or ideology part of who we believe we are. Mm. But then we have to ask ourselves, when I leave this world, am I taking that with me? Mm. Is that ideology going to be part of who I am? Or is it not? So then truly, is it who I am? Mm. Or is it just part of what I'm experiencing while I'm here and I can change it, as you said, like I changed my clothes? Mm. That's a beautiful question. And to me, I feel... For me personally, I really feel that each one of us are creator beings. And so to, in order to fully exercise my creative being from within, resilience is an excellent tool to do that. Right. Because when I, when I allow external ideas or thoughts or beliefs or anything to define me, then I, it's so easy to, it's easy to subscribe and say yes without thought it takes a lot more effort to contemplate to synthesize to seek to understand to be curious as you beautifully stated and understand how does it align within and then how can i embody whatever i believe and express that back out into the world and so it's through that process that i just expressed that i feel allows me to be the the greatest creator being that i can be and resilience is that partner tool to help me achieve that. Because I definitely do. When I, 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 have feel, I have felt the most removed from my authentic self when I allowed the external to define who I am. Because I, feel like I, was, I felt like I was no longer, like the idea of, of even saying like I am a creator being like, or that other people are, you know, everyone is. Like those, those thoughts weren't even in my mind. Um, it just it seemed to me that the whole world was, I mean, I don't know. I didn't even really spend a lot of time on it. It just, it just felt like everyone was kind of doing what everyone else was doing. Yeah. Right? And so for it me. It's all just happening around you right. and wherever you went is where you went. Yes. Um, and I didn't realize kind of some of the pitfalls are the victim mentality. You know, what the world is happening, you know, everything's happening to me, not with mm-hmm. me or for me. And so there, there are these pitfalls that we can go into when we, when we, lose sight of that and so that's where resilience can really create an effective um, growth mindset and really help us understand who we are in our authentic selves and express that and embody that and keep testing and, and and learning and growing and expanding that awareness and seeing okay well hey does this does this version of me align Am I willing to say something and then realize, oh, you know what? Now that I say it out loud, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't really fit as much as I thought it would. And that's okay. Kind of like trying on clothes, yeah. right? You take it into the right. <laughs> take it into the fitting room and you're like, oh, that looked really good on the hanger, but nah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't quite work. Not for me, exactly. Uh, so there's I, I think and uh, to me that's the the rigidity versus the flexibility aspect. 
right? And so we right. can be steadfast while still being flexible, uh, which is uh, probably unintuitive um, when you think about it logically. But as you really hone in on it and, and trust in it, you'll realize it is truth. There, it, it is so intuitive. It is actually uh, how we are at, our, at the very essence of our being. Yes, 100%. And it's not easy. Like if someone triggers you because you've had such a deep held belief around something, anything, it doesn't have to be politics or religion or the common ones. It can be around ice cream Mm -hmm. or it could be around your favorite book or any of these things. Sports teams. Sports teams are huge. Oh my gosh. Where Mm -hmm. I grew up in Ohio, Mm -hmm. Football was a religion. Mm -hmm. Like you want to talk about religion, you had religion, but then you have football. Mm -hmm. And so the rivalry was incredible. Mm -hmm. And it was easy during football season for people to become very triggered. Mm -hmm. And we're talking American football, not like true football. So, Mm -hmm. Um, but it was the triggering that would happen in the workplace, a place where you wouldn't think, but it was a, It was incredible to observe. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin to say, all right, so triggers can happen over pretty much anything. And if you do get triggered, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to navigate a trigger? What choice are you going to make? Are you going to suppress it and pretend like it's not happening? Mm -hmm. Are you going to act on it? And if so, in what way? And I know one tool that helped me, I had an aunt and uncle that taught me a lot about life. And one of the things my aunt taught me in the early stages of my learnings was, look, I'm going to give you 15 minutes to feel however you want to feel about something. I don't care, but you've got 15 minutes, so you better feel it now. Mm -hmm. And then once it's over, then you better move on because you can't change what happened. You can't change anything about the past, but you can certainly choose to do something about what the next step's going to be. So during that 15 minutes of feeling whatever you're feeling, you better figure out what your next step's going to be too. I was like, oh, (laughs) okay. (laughs) That's great advice. I mean, feeling is exploration, right? Yeah. And that's, that's putting on the different clothes seeing how it feels and allowing ourselves to experience what we're, what we're meant to experience so that we can gain that information and learn more and expand and grow. Yeah. That's beautiful. And the amazing thing was the more that I would feel through the faster that time became like, I didn't need 15 minutes. Suddenly I only needed 10 minutes and I could get to, to where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Then it became five minutes And I immediately knew how I desired to respond. Next thing you know, it's like one minute. And it's crazy when we start to really get in tune with what we're truly feeling, Mm -hmm. how much shorter that time gap becomes Mm -hmm. by giving ourselves that grace. Now, sometimes I still need 15 minutes. I'm not going to lie. Depending on the trigger, then having that 15 minutes is nice, right? Like, again, going back to if you lose somebody that you greatly care about or you hear that somebody that you care about just got diagnosed with something terminal or there are going to be these deep hits. Can you change it? No. Does that change the fact that you feel what you feel? No. Mm -hmm. So you need time to process. Mm -hmm. Take the time to process, but also take the time to understand you're not going to change it, but you can change how you're responding to it. Mm -hmm. And then you can move on, hit your resilience stride, and direct your emotional flow, if you will, toward that situation Mm -hmm. versus being battered around by it and feeling like you have no direction. That's very well said, my love. 
So if you've ever felt like you have no North Star and you're looking for a way to become unshakable, we have a lot more amazing podcasts right here on the Heart Leader Podcast channel. So take some time, do some exploration, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. 